Bill O'Reilly here, Wednesday, August 11th, 2021. You are listening to the O'Reilly Update. Here's what's happening today in America. Andrew Cuomo resigns as governor of New York. A trillion-dollar infrastructure deal passes the Senate. COVID vaccination rates rise in the South. Europe imposes strict virus mandates. Gas prices hit record highs. Also ahead, Trump's revenge. Can he bring down the social media companies? But first, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo is out. Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul will take control on August 24th. Mr. Cuomo maintaining his innocence despite stepping down, blaming his behavior on, quote, generational and cultural shifts, as well as political intrigue. The Senate approving a bipartisan infrastructure package that will allocate $1 trillion to fix the nation's roads, bridges, airports. The final tally, 69 to 30 in the Senate, 19 Republicans supporting the legislation, somewhat surprisingly, including Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. The proposal now heads to the House, where it will pass. Biden will sign it. And then on top of that, there's another $3.5 trillion budget bill that looks like it may pass as well. So the United States is about to change big time. Vaccination rates rising in some pandemic hotspots. More people in Alabama, Florida, Louisiana, Arkansas getting the jabs as the Delta variant runs wild. The CDC reporting roughly 125,000 new infections a day, up 950% since June. About 65,000 Americans are now hospitalized with Delta. 95% of them not vaccinated. Italy and France imposing severe COVID mandates. Police now asking locals to display digital vaccine passports when in public places. The rules apply to restaurants, theaters, bars, gyms, shopping malls. Similar measures are being planned in Germany, the UK, and Spain. There are massive demonstrations in Europe against those mandates. The cost of gas hitting record highs in America as millions of people travel for summer vacation. Hardest-hit states, California, New York, Hawaii, Massachusetts. Prices up 57% for gasoline nationwide. Cheapest spot, Louisiana, $2.75 a gallon. In a moment, they may have silenced Donald Trump, but he may win in the end. Just ahead. Fellow Americans, Bill O'Reilly here. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's noticed the state of our great nation has changed dramatically, and with it, the world's rock-solid confidence in the U.S. dollar. Thanks to our government's out-of-control spending, many believe we'll see dark days ahead for the dollar. That's why today millions of Americans are putting a portion of their savings in gold and silver. And with their sterling reputation, American Hartford Gold is the only company I am happy to put my name behind. All it takes to get started is a short phone call, and they'll have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your IRA. Plus, Tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you, and they'll give you up to $1,500 of free silver on your first order. Call 877-444-GOLD-GOLD, 877-444-GOLD, or text GOLD to 65532. That's 877-444-GOLD-GOLD, or text GOLD to 65532. Time now for the O'Reilly Update message of the day, the revenge of Donald Trump his lawsuit against big tech. On July 7, Mr. Trump filed legal action against three of the country's biggest tech companies, claiming he and others have been wrongfully censored. Trump's lawyers announced the action against Facebook, Twitter, and Google, along with company executives Mark Zuckerberg, Jack Dorsey, and Sundar Pichai. That was done at a press conference in New Jersey. The former president's action is backed by the American First Policy Institute, a group founded by former Trump officials, including Linda McMahon and Brooke Rollins. That group will pay the bills. John Cole, lead counsel in Trump's class action lawsuit, he's a veteran of the tobacco lawsuits in the mid-1990s. 
Coal was one of the principal negotiators in the $386 billion tobacco settlement reached in June of 1997. By the way, he is married to Greta Van Susteren. I recently interviewed John Cole on the No Spin News on BillOReilly.com, my television outlet. If you go there, you can see the interview. Now, as you may know, Mr. Trump has been suspended from using social media platforms since January 6th and the Capitol riot. The headline of his lawsuit reads, quote, We're asking the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Florida to order an immediate halt to social media companies' illegal, shameful censorship of the American people. We're going to hold big tech accountable. Many experts believe Donald Trump may very well win this lawsuit. And if that happens, the social media companies will be in major trouble. They will have to pay a lot of money And their censorship, which is established, will collapse. And even if Donald Trump loses, Republicans will likely try to pass new laws reigning in Silicon Valley. President Biden will not go along with that. He'd never sign a law. But the attempt is coming. Now, some of you may have heard that I'm going to do a history tour with former President Donald Trump. That will take place in December. First four shows are in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Orlando, Dallas, and Houston, Texas. If you'd like more information, just go to BillOReilly.com. But the importance of this is that I will ask Donald Trump exactly what he wants to accomplish in going after the social media companies besides revenge. So does he want no power to censor anything? What about pedophiles, things like that? What exactly does he want? This is why it's called the history tour. It's not going to be a rally. It's going to be down to what Donald Trump did in office and how he sees the country today. I think it's going to be fascinating. I'm Bill O'Reilly, and I approve the message by writing it. For more honest news analysis, please go to BillOReilly.com. Check out my new book, Killing the Mob, a great summer read. In a moment, something you might not know. Are you looking for your next investment? Bill O'Reilly here. There are seven reasons to look at the NRIA Real Estate Development Fund. Monthly cash flow payouts of 10% annualized. Bonuses to 21% targeted. They strategically locate in lower-risk, high-demand areas people want to move to. New construction is short on supply. Real estate affords diversification and safety from stock market risk. Their short- and long-term strategy provides for steady returns right now. NRIA is an industry leader with a 15-year proven track record. So, If you've been sitting on the sidelines or want to diversify, start your due diligence at nria.net. Or you can call 800-800-1414. That's easy. 800-800-1414. An offer of securities is only made by the NRIA Private Placement Memorandum. Read it first. Past performance does not guarantee future results. NRIA is a real estate development firm. Learn more at nria.net. Now the O'Reilly Update brings you something you might not know. The rich and famous can spend their entire lives generating fortunes, building giant estates, traveling all over the world. But when it is all over, when they are in the ground, the wealthy sometimes make more money dead than alive. Each year, Forbes magazine releases a list of the highest paid dead celebrities. Here are the dearly departed who made big bucks last year. Number 10, Marilyn Monroe. She generated 8 million bucks last year. Her image is used by more than 100 brands, including Legos. The nine spot goes to Prince. The musician died in 2016 from an overdose of fentanyl, but he still made $10 million in record sales last year. Number eight, John Lennon, 13 million. Thanks to a co-writing credit on the Beatles' most popular songs, 
The Lennon Estate cashes in whenever a tune is used on TV, on the radio, or in the movies. At number seven, Bob Marley. The reggae star's company, House of Marley, sold $14 million in merchandise, clothing, headphones, even lighters adorned with his image to use pot. And number six is number 24, Kobe Bryant. His estate made around $20 million in jersey and book sales last year. The top five begins with Elvis Presley. The king of rock earned $23 million in 2020. Next, Arnold Palmer. The golfer's deal with Arizona Beverages for his lemonade iced tea brought in $25 million. Third spot goes to Charles Schultz, creator of Peanuts, Charlie Brown, Snoopy. His characters hauled in $32 million last year. Wow. Second place, Dr. Seuss. Thanks to a series of television and film deals, Seussville is a very wealthy neighborhood. While some activists tried to cancel the doctor over so-called racist imagery, he still sold 6 million books, generating 33 million in income. Finally, number one dead star, Michael Jackson. His massive music catalog, which includes songs by Elvis and Aretha Franklin, and a long-term deal with Sony, accounted for 70% of his earnings. Ready? The king of pop, Jackson, made $48 million last year. Back after this. Thousands of animals are abandoned in the wilderness in America, and they need your help. I partnered up with Delta Rescue, the largest no-kill, care-for-life animal sanctuary in the world. Founded by actor Leo Grillo, Delta Animal Sanctuary is a -a one-of-the-kind rescue. Trained attendants look after each animal, providing them with food, treats, toys, and affection. Also, Delta Rescue has an on-site animal hospital that operates 365 days a year. And unlike others, Delta Rescue believes in giving animals a right to life. They allow all moms to have their litters, then care for the entire family for life. Delta Rescue relies solely on donations from people like us to help fulfill their mission. Support Delta Rescue and put your legacy to work. Delta's tax-saving estate planning. Grow your estate while letting your compassion for animals live on well into the future. Learn more at DeltaRescue.org forward slash Bill. DeltaRescue.org forward slash Bill. Thank you for listening to the O'Reilly Update. I am Bill O'Reilly. No spin, just facts, and always looking out for you.